So you're going to be watching Castlevania Memories, a video I saw in 2018 at my old place in Gresham versus the house. And that's 2020, 2021. So you're going to see the video in entirety what it was. And I don't know why I didn't release it, but you're going to see Castlevania Memories. There's a couple things I'm going to interject maybe here and there just for context. So anytime you see this symbol, it's present day. It's Retro Dad. Well, I want to talk about Castlevania memories and my memories of Castlevania. But before we go on to this video, I want to take a little bit of a moment and pause for a second and talk about what this video is going to represent. You're going to see some cuts from two years ago and current year. That was because I recorded this in 2018, but I kept some things out. So every once in a while, you'll see me interject with some stuff I kept out of the video or stuff I cannot find that was recorded. So guys, hope you enjoy Castlevania Memories. We'll talk about my memories of Castlevania and the series, what it meant to me after this. If you want more gaming and collecting content, don't forget to subscribe to stay in the know. Enter at your own risk. If you watched my recent OTF episode, I talked about the time when I had a choice when I was a kid between Castlevania and the original Double Dragon for the NES. I had a choice between this and Castlevania, and I chose Double Dragon. I saved just enough nickels, dimes, penny, dollars to get a game. This is a little bit after Christmas. My dad took me to KB Toys, and I had about, I think, $38 or $40 and I had a choice between these two. I don't remember why I had a choice between these two. I think it was the price point. You know, I knew about Castlevania, but I was a fan of the arcade game for Double Dragon, and I chose Double Dragon. Now, I don't regret that decision. It wouldn't be for many years till I played a Castlevania game when I was in college. And I played by using early 2000s emulation. I think BIOS NES. That's how I played some of these NES games like DuckTales, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and the sequel. Bubble Bobble 2, I played all the way through using emulation. Batman the Video Game, Nightmare on Elm Street, and that's how I played the original Castlevania. I used that BIOS NES, I think it was. That's how I played NES games in college, not on a physical device. Using a keyboard, my controller would not work. I kind of forgot about the game until we got a Wii and the virtual console started. And I saw Castlevania. And I immediately bought Castlevania, Castlevania 2, and eventually Dracula's Curse. Technically, I already did a review and a few on Castlevania and Dracula's Curse. Castlevania is a game that defines the Nintendo Entertainment System. First time I played this on the virtual console, it like took me back in time to the early 90s. And I was just a little kid looking at that choice between Castlevania and Double Dragon. Sometimes I regret that I didn't choose Castlevania instead. But I love Double Dragon, especially on the NES and even on the Game Boy as well. Castlevania, the first time I played it, I was hooked. Grabbing the whip and the chainmail, getting enemies. I'll never forget the music. And as I progressed, the game was challenging for me at first, and I got stuck on Dracula for a long time. Fighting the mummy, fighting Frankenstein, fighting all these monsters of death who can forget that you know that whole room before death the medusa heads it throws off first time players it threw me off dracula i found it so frustrating first like 15 20 times i tried to play dracula and try to kill him no dracula killed me now i can pretty much beat dracula dracula still kills me every once in a while i've been castlevania plenty of times It's a great looking NES game. And it took me back to all my friends going, God, I play Castlevania, I play Castlevania. 
I'm like, yeah, yeah, I will, I will. You know, I played the Simon's Quest handheld game. That was like my first introduction to Castlevania, besides I think uh, he was on Captain N. That's not exactly the same thing. But I still love Castlevania, and every year I will try to play through it and beat Dracula. Tradition I've been doing for the last like seven years. Now, I was really excited about playing Simon's Quest. And playing Simon's Quest, it was disappointing. That's not just coming from me from 2020. That was my first thought back at 2007, uh, 2006, 2008, whenever it came on the virtual console. Once I could, you know, get that virtual console up and running, I was buying the games. And playing Simon's Quest, I didn't even know what the heck I was doing besides chasing zombies around here and there. It was more to do. Obviously, I didn't do it, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the Nintendo powers. I used some internet stuff. So I did a 31 Days of Halloween video in 2022 about Simon's Quest. So I have a new appreciation for the game. Played through it for the second time. Yes, it's confusing. It's a non-linear. You can get lost. There's a lot of hidden things. Can't trust anyone in town. Or they try to hit on you. One of the two. Gotta get orbs. Throw oak stakes at them. A lot of rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. It's not perfect, but it's still a pretty good Castlevania game. I like the graphics, even though I think I like the look of Simon better in original Castlevania. It has that same atmosphere, but it's not the same. I quickly moved on to Castlevania 3. Now, Castlevania 3, I didn't go as far deep into Castlevania 3 like I do now. I think I only played halfway through because I played Dracula's Curse originally with Grant. You know, you could pick up Alucard, Grant, or pick up Sypha. Well, I went with Grant the first time I played. Later on, my styles played Alucard. Recently, I played Sypha, and that's just a long way. The thing about Castlevania 3, it's like Burger King, that old slogan, have it your way. If you want it hard, medium, or easier, depending on who you choose. There are different forks in the road, different paths you can take to make the game longer or harder. I always like to do Alucard because I like Alucard and his powers. Sypha, I barely used. I just recently played it through with Sypha. It's a longer game with Sypha and a little bit more difficult, especially that one boss. Now, I really liked Castlevania Dracula's Curse the first time I played it. I was really impressed by it. But unfortunately, at that time, I was playing so many other games and some retro stuff on that virtual console. And, you know, I was sharing it with my uh, wife at the time. And she was playing Paper Mario, which we had on the virtual console and some other games and modern games, too. It was quickly uh, laid aside. Once in a while, I play, you know, the original Castlevanias. I wanted to beat Castlevania 1 before I really went all the way through with Dracula's Curse play like halfway through or three quarters of the way through the first time I played it. Dracula's Curse is a fantastic game. You know the bosses in it, like death, there's two forms of death. Bosses repeat from the original Castlevania. Some of them are a little bit more tougher. Now out of the three, my favorite is Dracula's Curse. And like most people, I feel that Castlevania 2 is the weaker of the three games. It has some interesting elements, but I think the original and the third game outshines Simon's Quest. If you watch my Game Boy series, you hear me talk about Belmont's Revenge and Castlevania Adventure. Castlevania Adventure is okay. There is some glitches to it. There's things that disappear, reappear. The slowdown is unbearable at times. The actions there, the gothic and horror elements are definitely there. It's not as polished as it could have been. I absolutely love Belmont's Revenge for the Game Boy. Like I say in my Game Boy series video, it is the game that us gamers wanted for our Game Boys. It's polished. It's not filled with cheap deaths. For the most part, the challenge is balanced. 
familiar baddies from both Castlevania Adventure and the original Castlevania. Plus it has side weapons and the overall adventure feels like an adventure, unlike the original one, which feels like you're just kind of trucking through mud. That's how I kind of feel about the Castlevania Adventure on the original Game Boy. Everything in Belmont's Revenge is enhanced. In my Game Boy series, I bring up not having Castlevania Legends or playing Castlevania Legends. Well, I recently picked up Castlevania Legends in the last year, and I played through that really excited, and I was highly disappointed. It doesn't have the same feel as Belmont's Revenge. It seems to step down. There's some pitfalls right off the bat. It's not one of my favorite Castlevania games. In fact, I think I'd rather play Castlevania Adventures over Castlevania Legends. Really sad because Castlevania Legends is a lot more expensive of a game. It's one I haven't played all the way through. I'll admit I've only played like maybe an hour, hour and a half, but my first impression of it was highly disappointing. <laughs> I got Castlevania Bloodline several, several years ago, and Castlevania 4. Let's talk about Bloodlines first. You get to choose between two characters with distinctly different power moves. When I first played Bloodlines, it threw me off because I was used to playing Super Castlevania 4 and the NES versions. It quickly grew on me. It's challenging. Thanks to Sega Genesis and its blast processing, there are some stunning visuals and effects in Castlevania Bloodlines. Oh, it can be challenging. My favorite Castlevania game out of all of Castlevania games that I've owned and been able to play is Super Castlevania 4. The controls, the action, the atmosphere, the sound, everything make this a top notch, not just a Castlevania game, but a Super Nintendo game. It's challenging for the right reasons. It's just a lot of fun. And when I first played this, I didn't really know much about it. Because I had the virtual console NES games, I didn't really get to play this one. I didn't have a Super Nintendo when I was a kid at a Sega Genesis. Now this came with my original SNES that I got back in like 2010. So I was excited because I was going to buy this separate anyway after getting them in the physical form. I wanted this game. So I played it. Played through it. Love Super Castlevania 4. I think it's my favorite Castlevania. I was impressed. You know, just that opening crawl, all the bugs crawling on the concrete. Just the music, the sound, the gameplay. This is a fantastic game. And I was so impressed the first time I played it, I had to play all the way through. I've beaten this a couple times. That little secret at the very end before you fight Dracula, you can hop into an invisible platform and get all these hearts and all these power-ups. Just little secrets like that. And I remember that from a, I think a Game Pro episode as well. But Super Castlevania 4, the first time I played it, I was blown away. I missed out because I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I was a Sega Genesis kid. Now I played the Super Nintendo and I had friends who talked about this, not as much as like the Castlevanias on the NES, but I had a couple friends talk about it. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was playing a little game called Splatterhouse 3. And that was one of the games that I loved. Because I chose Double Dragon, I felt that my timeline went like this. And I never got to enjoy Castlevania. And I had friends that talk about it all the time. Like, oh, have you played Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Which we'll talk about in a second. And I'm like, no, 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 I've never played any of the Castlevania games. Not until I was, like I said, in college. I think as I got this, my timeline went like this. I never got to enjoy the greatness that is Super Castlevania 4. To me, it is the best Castlevania in the retro systems. But damn, this is close. This is fan freaking Fantastic. I do have the black label and I have the PSP version. 
just everything about this stunning. This is one of the greatest probably PlayStation 1 games that you can get. Just for Castlevania, but on Alucard with his powers, you can turn into a bat. You can do so many awesome things in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I started rebuying PlayStation games. I knew I had to get this. When I got this, I knew I had to play it. Now, I tend to play the PSP version, I think, all the way through first, and I played this one. You know, it's kind of gone up quite a bit in price, too. It's definitely one worth it. And if you don't want to buy a physical, go digital. You won't regret it. It's a great Castlevania game. I say it barely beats this one in my version, which one's the better, too. Barely. Uh, I don't know. I might change my mind. I might say this one's better now. Now, I didn't include Castlevania 64 for one particular reason. Yes, I've owned it in 2014, CIB, but it's one I really don't know that well. I haven't played even much of, even when I first got the game CIB, so I didn't really know a whole lot about the game, and N64 is not my favorite console, and I don't really have any memories or any time really associated with that game. I talked a little bit about Castlevania 64 in 2018, but for some reason I can't find the footage. Hopefully down the line I'll be able to play more of it. I do want to get Legacy of Darkness someday, but I didn't include Castlevania 64. For that reason, I didn't play a whole lot of it. I bought this at a GameStop, and I bought it because it had two Castlevania games. Well, technically there's three, kind of a fourth game on it too. There's there's like an original Rondo of Blood, the original Rondo of Blood, and Symphony of the Night. Now, Rondo of Blood is one I have not played all the way through. I bought this mostly for Symphony of the Night. I always wanted to get Drek X on the Super Nintendo. That was one game that's still missing in my collection. I love to get it. It hasn't gone up a lot since our little future pandemic. I know I'm doing some 2018 stuff and doing modern stuff too, but definitely it is a different time period because that game was like $80, $100 for a while. I always passed on, like, I'll pick it up sometime. I'll pick it up sometime. And I could have got it for like $90 like a year and a half ago. And I really regret I didn't. I got Chrono Trigger because that game has gone up too. Now it's up past 100 again. A year later after doing this portion of the video, 2021, I ended up getting Dracula X. I bought this because it had Symphony of the Night and I wanted to play on my PSP. This is a great game, a great deal. You get two great Castlevania games. Now, I like Rondo of Blood, but I love Symphony of the Night. So I bought Castlevania Symphony of the Night at the Portland Retro Expo for 20 or 25 bucks. Look it up now. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Now, I had friends during the initial run of the PlayStation when it was first released talk to me about this game. Have you played Symphony of the Night? Have you played Symphony of the Night? I've come to put an end to this. I was so busy in high school. I mean, I played games, especially Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and some other games. I didn't have a chance to play this. Plus, I didn't feel right playing it since I didn't play the other Castlevanias. I'm kind of weird that way. I know some people don't do that with games. I've done it only for a handful of games where I'll play like a sequel. I haven't played the other ones in the series. I had to play from the original and then go up. Well, I bought this because I wanted it. I'm like, I'm finally gonna play it. Bought this in my 80 gig PlayStation 3, which is backwards compatible. This game blew me away. I know I said that about Super Castlevania 4, but this one was like, wow, hot dammy dammer sin. Starts off strong, voice acting, you know, die monster, you don't belong in this world. I still love those cheesy lines. But enough talk, how about you? The game itself was awesome. That's all I can say. You are awesome. No, it cannot be. Ah! It's a long, long, long game. The longest Castlevania game I've played. Especially if you want to unlock Richter. Which is the best Castlevania game? Symphony of the Night, Castlevania 4, both? Maybe all of them? You shall regret those words. I pick both of you guys, okay? I don't want to fight. What? <laughs> Castlevania is a series that I did not grow up with, but I knew about. And later on in life, in my collecting adulthood, 
and replaying these relics of the past, I got to experience Castlevania. And I recommend if you haven't played Castlevania, try it out. You will not be disappointed. Try it on the NES. Try it on the Game Boy. Play Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo. Get Symphony of the Night if you can on, on that PlayStation 1. It's a great series and one that I always look back thinking about, hey, I tried to just you know, play a game for fun. And I was like, hey, let me actually play Castlevania. And it's a series that I wish I would have had as a kid. I talk about that timeline. If I would have chose Castlevania, would my life changed? Probably not a whole lot. I should have went Castlevania because I'm a big horror fan. My favorite genre of movies, and I love survival horror, my favorite genre of video games. I write horror sometimes for comedy mostly. It would be interesting to see if I would have chose Castlevania. Wait a moment. You seem human, and yet, what do you hear? There are plenty of ways to play the Castlevania series now. There's multiple compilations that have been released. The Castlevania Collection, which includes three Castlevania games on the NES, all three of them, Castlevania, Simon's Quest, Dracula's Curse, and the Japanese versions, even Super Castlevania 4, and Kid Dracula, the Famicom version. Now, the reason why I didn't talk about Kid Dracula in this video it was already done as a Halloween special when I originally did Castlevania Memories. That's one reason I even did the whole Castlevania Memories was based on doing Kid Dracula. Like, well, let's talk about the Castlevania Memories since I'm talking about Kid Dracula. Kid Dracula. Great game. The Castlevania Advanced Collection has the GBA games. and even includes Dracula X. There's plenty of ways to play Castlevania in modern times. Well guys, this is Castlevania Memories. What are your memories of Castlevania? Do you still love the game? What's your favorite one? Comment below. Sorry about the jumping between 2018 and modern times, but I felt it was appropriate as I still wanted to release some of the stuff I talked about in 2018. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun. Go game. See you later.